Okay, so let's start. So first, I have to to make an erratum, as uh, as uh, was noted by Anna Abasheva. The, there was something wrong with my description of the Picard group of the of a field. So it was already corrected in some sense by uh, the formula, which was the exact sequence, which was uh, given by Antoine Chamberlain during his talk. Anyway, so I I forgot about this part. Uh, which is uh, a compact torus uh, with a volume which is given by the regulator. Okay, but anyway, this is not in essential in my talk, so it was only a remark. Okay, so let me now go back to equidistribution. So, as I explained at the end last time, if we look at the projective space, then there is an equidistribution just is, uh, well, the limit of the distribution of the points of rational points of bonded height converts to a measure, probability measure, which is quite natural when you describe it as a product of local measures. So let me explain now how we can extend that in a more general setting. So. I'm going to introduce, in a quite general setting, an adelic measure on the adelic space, which is a generalization of the adelic measure we saw for the projective space. So the construction is as follows. So I assume that V is a nice variety. So this means smooth, projective, geometrically integral. And I assume also that I have an uh, adelic metric on V. Or uh, slightly weaker uh, hypothesis, I assume that I have an adelic norm on omega v minus 1. And from this uh, data, I'm going to define a measure. So the point is that the construction is very similar to the way you construct a, a measure on a real variety using, uh, using a volume form. So the point is that by uh, the formula for change of variables, if uh, you look at the following uh, expression, so d over dx1 exterior, d over dxn, w times dx1, w, dxn, w. So uh, this defines a local measure. So what are x1, x where x1, xn are local coordinates uh, open subset of V of kW. So uh, uh, let us fix some W in the set of places of K. OK, so I take local coordinates, and then I look at this expression. So these are the hard measures on KW. And this, well, these are um, in the tangent bundle. So these are tangent vectors. So this belongs to is seen as a, a well continuous section of omega v minus one. So therefore, I can thank uh, the norm w of this continuous section, and it gives a function. So this makes sense. Right. 
So the point is that you use a formula for change of variables. In fact, this does not depend on the choice of local coordinates. So this measure does not depend on the choice of local coordinates. So I'm not going to give the proof of the details of the proof of that. I mean, you do it exactly as you do for a volume form in a, in a real setting. So therefore, you can do it together. I mean, you have it locally, but where locally you can choose local coordinates. And therefore, you can glue it together. to get a measure, a Borelian measure, on V of KW. All right. And uh, moreover, uh, the volume, since uh, the space is compact, the total volume is finite. So in fact, I can define a local probability measure, mu w, by taking 1 over omega w, uh, I forgot to give a name, so omega w for this measure, and I take the corresponding probability measure by dividing by the total volume, omega of w. OK, so now I have local measures, and I can define using the, well, OK, I have to assume something, sorry. Uh, I have to assume that there are uh, points uh, locally. So I assume that I should have said that somewhere here. I assume that the set of adelic points is not empty. OK, so this is non-zero, and you can define that. OK, so on the adelic space, you can take the product uv, which will be the product of all places of uh, mu w. So this is a probability measure. on this space. And uh, well, if you take the example of Pn, you get exactly the measure I defined last time. Right. So, uh, okay, so this gives some kind of generalization of the measure. So now I can generalize the question. So let me fix a notation for the counting measure, counting probability measure. So, um, for any w in V of k, uh, which I suppose to be non empty. The counting measure on W for points, uh, let me write it delta, for points of height less than B is 1 over the cardinal of this set, sum for P in this set of the Dirac measure at P. OK, so now I can set and can ask a precise question. So let me call it over optimistic. So the over optimistic question will be 
well does uh, delta of v of k height less than v. So he, I should uh, say something, height. So I'm using the height which is defined by the same data, so by this norm uh, on omega v minus 1. Does this counting measure converge weakly as p goes to infinity to the probability measure I define on the adelic space? Right. Well, of course, uh, if you are, so I mean, you can ask this question. I mean, this makes sense because it's true for pn, right? But of course, I mean, uh, you have, you may have, depending on who you are, or sometimes on the day, you can have the converse, I mean, the over probabilistic question. Is there any variety besides Pn for which it is true? Right, so of course the truth is in, in between. So let me start by answering the second question, which is easier to answer. So uh, the first general result about that, I mean, there are not so many results about equidistribution, in fact. But let me give you two results. So if I take the Cauchy G over P, where G is a linear uh, algebraic group, and P is a parabolic subgroup, which means that, which means exactly that the quotient is projective, then. Uh, then uh, the well, the well. Let's call it that naive equidistribution. And the naive equidistribution is true. And in fact, all the examples I gave, well, all the picture I've drawn for you are particular case of this type of variety. So, I mean, if I consider P2, if I consider P1 cross P1, if I consider the, the sphere, all of them are particular examples of that. So, in all the pictures I've shown to you, in fact, there is equidistribution. So, if you remember this picture, you can say, well, okay, there is equidistribution, but the pictures do not, do not look the same. So maybe later, I hope I will be able to explain why the pictures do not look the same. Also, there is equidistribution in, the, in that sense. OK, so this is the first theorem. So as a corollary, I'm not going to prove it because, I mean, OK, let me not prove it, but explain how you can prove that. So. The idea of the proof, or more precisely, the, the main ingredient for the proof is to use harmonic analysis, adelic harmonic analysis. On the space G over P in the adelic setting. And to do that, in fact, it is more or less using long lens work on Eisenstein series. So 
So you are using a, a rather big machinery to prove that. Yes? Sorry, what did you say? Well, no, no, you don't do not need uh, any special assumption about uh, G. In fact, you can, I mean, you can question by the, uh, uh, oh, I, I forgot about it. But you can question out the, the, the reductive part. The, sorry, the, the radical. The radical uh, is in, in P. Right. Um, OK, so I'm not going to prove that. The second theorem, which I'm not going to prove either, but you, which is a consequence of Birch theorem, for hypersurfaces is, oh, uh, let, sorry, I forgot to say something before I go to that. So there is a corollary of that. I mean, if you are not familiar with this kind of bite, there is a corollary of that is that, namely, this implies that uh, this naive equidistribution is true for any quadric. So this is quite a strong statement. So of course, the natural question is, once you see that, is what about higher degrees? So this gives some motivation for the following statement, which is uh, due essentially to Birch. Also, it was not stated like that by Birch, but let V in Pn, well, let's say over Q, uh, smooth hypersurface of degree d with n uh, bigger than something like 2 at the power d. Uh, then, and assume, uh, also I should have said the same, uh, yeah. Uh, assume that uh, the addict points, the set of addict points in the T, then you have the naive equidistribution. So if you have enough variables in any degree, you have also equidistribution. So this follows from the circle method. So OK, so uh, you see, I mean, it's not that absurd to, to, to ask this over-optimistic question, because we have nice examples. But of course, uh, once you think a little bit of it, about it, you realize that. Uh, the naive equidistribution has very strong consequences. Yes? For which? Well, that's the point. For now, I was not very careful about that. So, so of course, it is quite. Hmm, sorry? I don't, I don't get it. No, uh, uh, I'm, I'm using heights relative to omega v minus 1. OK? So of course, I need some positivity for omega v minus 1 for that, for that to, have, to have sense. OK? So uh, it excludes uh, almost immediately any variety of general type because, uh, well, Anyway, so uh, yeah, so I was speaking about the 
consequence of uh, naive equidistribution? Well, one of the naive consequences, I mean, is that, well, if you look at the support, yeah, if you look at this measure, of course, the support of this measure is contained in the set of rational points. So this implies that, in fact, If you look, well, let me write it in a very improper way of, because I do not know whether the limit exists or not. But if it exists, if this limit exists, then the support of it has to be contained in uh, the closure of the rational points inside the adelic space. So if this limit exists, let's assume that it exists, then its support is contained in that set, in the closure, which is contained in that. And we know that in general, this is not the same. In fact, to say that the closure of the rational points is the set of adelic points is to assume that there is a weak approximation and there are counter, counter examples to weak approximation. So, uh, uh, of course, uh, well, uh, this implies, of course, that as well v of k is Zariski dense. Uh, well, at least if uh, v of a k is not empty. So, I mean, uh, so, um, okay. So, of course, uh, we know so of examples in which V of K are not, is not Zariski dense. I mean, if, for example, I take a curve of genus bigger than two, I mean, uh, the, the rational points are not Zariski dense. Or if I take a product of uh, anything with a curve of genus bigger than two, then I, I have examples where the set of fraction points is not very risky dense. Okay, so this is not too serious a problem because, of course, if the set of rational points is not very risky dense, I can always consider the closure of the set of uh, rational points in, in V and therefore reduced to the case where the set of rational points is just a dense. So from now on, I assume that V of k is the risky dense. Of course, if you believe in Lang's conjecture, this means that you are considering varieties which are uh, special. Anyway, I, as I was saying before, I mean, you have to exclude uh, varieties of general type to have this kind of statement. Right, so I assume that, all right. But then, as I said, uh, you have examples for which V of K is a risky dance, and where here, this is not equal. So let me uh, give a crash course uh, on Brauerman in obstruction. So Bauman obstruction in 10 minutes, five maybe, if I manage it. Okay, so.
to weak approximation. So we consider the Brouwer group. So Brouwer corresponds to, in fact, the use of the Brouwer group on Paul Manin because Manin invented the obstruction, or more precisely, Manin realized that many of the obstructions which were already known could be explained using the Brouwer group. So we consider the Brouwer group, the cohomological Brouwer group, which is Well, for fields, uh, you look at the Galois cohomology with coefficient in L, star, uh, L bar star. So the multiplicative group. And also, you can define it for varieties using the second etal uh, group community group with coefficient in GM, and you take the torsion part. All right, then uh, the basic point is given by a, a class field theory. So class field theory which was uh, proven uh, in the last century, says that there are embeddings from the Brouwer group of K of W into Q over Z, which I denote by, well, in W. So this is an embedding, and this is, in fact, isomorphism. Is, uh, w is uh, ultrametric, an Archimedean. And otherwise, the image is uh, uh, z over 2z for real places, and uh, is trivial. for complex places. Right, and uh, what is the property of this invariant map? Well, the point is that we have an exact sequence. So, uh, of course, the Brouwer group is functorial, and uh, we have an exact sequence so the Brouwer group can be embedded in the direct sum for W going over all places of the field K of the Brouwer group of KW. And there you take the sum of all these maps I just described, well, not really, but introduced to Q over Z close to zero. So this is an, the, an exact sequence which is given by global class field theory. Okay, so what was the idea of Manin to use this exact sequence to get obstruction to weak approximation? So now we consider a pairing which goes from the Brouwer group of V times uh, the Adel's point of V on which goes to Q over Z and which is defined as follows. If I take a class alpha in the Brouwer group and if I take a point so a family PW for W in the set of places. Well, I can consider, 
well, I'm not going to, sh to show that it is well defined, but in fact it is the sum over all places <coughs> of the invariant at W of the evaluation of alpha at PW. So this is the evaluation of PW. So it comes from the functoriality, more or less, uh, of the Brock group. So, uh, so evaluation of alpha at PW. So this belongs to the Brouwer group of KW, and therefore I can take the invariant. And this gives something in Q over Z. So, right. so I can see that, and in fact I'm going to see that, as a map which goes from the Brouwer group, uh, sorry, no. Uh, which goes from the adult points, V of AK, to uh, the Brouwer group uh, of V Chesh, which is the set of homomorphism from the Brouwer group of V to Q over Z. All right, and I denote the image of some point P by, let's say, uh, well, eta P. All right, so the main point is that if you take a rational point, if P belongs to the rational points of V, then alpha of P, in fact, belongs to, comes from the Brouwer group of P. And therefore, the sum by the exact sequence I described before, the sum of the invariant at W of alpha of P is equal to zero. So this means that the map, the image of P yeah, it appears to be zero. And then there is a trick which is not totally obvious, but it turns out that this map, in fact, uh, is continuous. So in fact, for any point P in V of K bar, eta of p has to be 0. So this implies that v of k bar is contained in uh, v of ak a k Brouwer, which is a set of p in the adelic space, such that eta p is equal to 0. And this, of course, is contained in the adelic space by definition. But in general, it's going to be different. So, uh, OK, so assume that so if we assume that So, OK, I, I, sh I should have said that if you take alpha, of course, there is a map from the Brouwer group of k to the Brouwer group of v. So you can have constant elements, so let's say. So, so constant element for me means coming from the Brouwer group of k. So if alpha is constant, constant, then again, this sum is 0. So in fact, you realize that you could see as something which is defined over the quotient of the Brouwer group of v by the image of the Brouwer group of k which is much smaller. So 
if we assume that it's finite, so in fact, this is true in most of the cases I'm interested in. So assume that this quotient is finite, then if you look at that, it turns out to be open and closed in V of AK. All right, so in fact, it's quite reasonable to take not a polity measure so over over V of AK for over the wall space, but to reduce this measure to this subspace. So let's call it mu of V BR, bar, so, uh, which is defined as, uh, well, mu of, so I have to assume that, of course, This is not empty. But on the other hand, since I assume uh, since I assume that the rational points are Zarsky dense, in fact implicitly I'm assuming that this is not empty. And I consider the induced probability measure. on uh, the, this part of the added space. Okay, so in some sense, the polity measure, knowing that anyway the points have to be in the Brouwer part. Right, so now I can uh, ask a slightly less uh, over-optimistic question. So the question is now, does, well, under which condition, when can we hope, well, this is not sort of symmetry, well, okay, does uh, the measure delta of uh, V of K is like less than B converges as B goes to infinity to this new measure, which takes into account the power many obstruction. So which takes into account what is the closure of the rational points in the adic space, conjecturally, at least for some classes of varieties. Right. So as usual in mathematics, when something goes completely wrong, so uh, this does not work. This does not work. Why? Because there are strange subsets which contains a lot, but a lot of points. So this is the next step, namely to consider accumulating subsets. So I think it is four accumulating subsets. So the point is that, in general, even if the counting measures converge, we have many examples where the support of the limit as B goes to the infinity of the counting measure over V of K is strictly smaller than the closure of the rational points in the adic space.
So let me describe to you the sandbox uh, example for that. So this is an example which was used by many great people to understand was what was going on. So the plane with one point blown up. All right, so this is something which is contained as a high pass surface in P2 cross P1. Uh, let's take coordinates x, y, z on u, v on text as an equation vx is equal to uh, y, uh, u, y. And then uh, let pi from v to p2 of q be the first projection. Then I take uh, the point P0 to be the point with homogeneous coordinates 0, 0, 0, 1. I take E to be the inverse image by pi of uh, this point. And I take U to be uh, the complement of E in V. Then we have that pi restricted to U is an isomorphism from u to p2 uh, minus as a point, p0. And we have also that the second projection is an isomorphism from e to p1 of q. Right. So uh, what do I do with that? Well, you can write explicitly uh, the height corresponding to the anti-canonical line bundle in that case. And uh, the height is given as follows, which goes, let's see, from V over Q to R, and uh, which simply maps, uh, let's say, P1, P, Q, let's say, to the height relative to O of 1 of P uh, at the power 2 times the height relative to O of 1 of Q without any power. Yeah. So using this formula, it's not very difficult to show that uh, we have the following estimate. Well, just to impress you, I will give prestigious names who have looked at that. Well, and it was used, looked at other, by other people as well, including myself. So anyway, so the result is as follows. If you look. At the number of points of wounded height on E, then this is equivalent to a constant that you can make explicit, which is 2 over theta Q of 2 times B square. And the number of points of height less than B on the open set U is equivalent to some constant. So I'm not completely sure of the rational factor, but. Uh, it doesn't uh, matter much. So the main point to notice is that here you have something which is in B square, and here you have something which is in B logarithm of B. So this means that there are much more points on E, which is closed subset, 
than on u, which is the open subset. So if you look now at the limit of the counting measure on the wall of V of k, then you get something which converges very nicely, but which converges. So the measure on V of k, h less than b, converges to, in fact, the measure I define for p1 over e. So in fact, the support of the limit measure is precisely the adelic points on E, but not on V. So it's missing uh, and, uh, most of the points of uh, most of the most of the space, in some sense. Right. So. In particular, if I take the measure mu v, which is in this case as the corrected one with the power obstruction, well, this the measure of that is zero. So this is okay. So the the support of the measure is something which is of measure zero when you look at the measure for the wall space. OK, but if you do the same for you, it changes everything. The point is that if you remove this set of bad points of accumulating this accumulating uh, subset, then uh, if you take u of q h less than b, B goes to infinity, then this goes to mu v, which is the same as mu v power in that case. So it, it might be counterintuitive to think that when you are removing points, you get uh, something which converges uh, to something with a larger support. But of course, the point is that you are dividing by the total number of points, so that's the explanation. And this is precisely the reason for which you have to remove this accumulating subset. I mean, if you want to have any kind of equity solution, the first thing is you have to remove this accumulating subset. So, OK, so then I can ask a question again. That's the way to do mathematics. Well, you make a first guess, and then you realize that it cannot be true. So you add some hypothesis, or you modify things a little bit, and you get something which is more often true. And then you find a counter example, but uh, you are so pleased with what, what you had done before that you would, do not want to throw away everything. So you modify the things so that it works. OK? So that's a way to do mathematics. OK, so now the question is that can we find Some open U, some open in V, not empty, of course, so that counting measure on U of Q converges to U V as V goes to infinity. Well, during some time, I mean, we during the, I think, between 91 and 95, we were quite happy with this kind, this type of question. And then there was a counterexample, which is a counterexample of Batyrev and Schinkel.
So let me describe quickly uh, this counter example. So this time you take a hypersurface in P3 times P3, which is given by the equation sum for i equals from 0 to 3 of xi y i cube is equal to 0. So it's a very nice hypersurface. It is a final variety. So smooth, everything you would like it to be. Right? And then uh, the height which you use, which is relative to the anti-canonical line bundle. So the height is simply h of p q is equal to h o of 1 of p at the power of, uh, I forgot, uh, it must be 3 times h of 1 of q. think yes that's it uh, yeah okay so then you consider the projection the first projection so this is something which goes from v to p3 uh, and if you take a point let's say x on the line in P3 of Q, such that the product of the X size is not zero, then the fiber is a smooth uh, cubic surface a smooth uh, diagonal cubic surface. So uh, there is a conjecture about uh, this smooth uh, cubic surface, which is that for, well, first of all, I have to remove, OK, in that case, there are obvious accumulating subsets, which are the 27 lines in the cubic surface. So I take u to be v minus uh, 27 line. OK, on the uh, conjecture which were mentioned by Per Selberger in his lecture, so this conjecture is still not proven, but I mean, people are quite convinced that they should be true, is that uh, the number of points, well, for any u contained in ux and u not empty. The number of points of wooded height in u of q should be equivalent to some constant depending on x times b times the logarithm of b at the power the rank of the picker group of the fiber minus one. So this is a conjecture. Conjecture. Right, but now uh, there is a similar conjecture for V itself. So the point is that uh, by uh, Lefschetz formula, the rank of the Picard group of V is equal to two, 2. So there is a conjecture for V. Well, this is, no, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm writing it wrong. So the initial conjecture for V was so by this, I mean that, in fact, it's not true. 
uh, the initial conjecture for V was that there exists some U in V open, not empty, such that the number of points of bounded height in U should be equivalent to some constant times B times the logarithm of P with power of the logarithm equals 1. Well, the point is that, OK, here you have the, the rank of the picker group, which can change from fiber to fiber. And in fact, you have something worse than that. You have that uh, if all the quotient xi over xj are cubes, then the rank of the picker group of Vx is equal to 4. This comes from the fact that uh, you can uh, did use the picker group from the configuration of the 27 lines. Right, so uh, this means that in that case, in the fiber, in the corresponding fiber, the conjecture predicts that there are too many points in each of these fibers. But of course, the point x in, the, in P3, which satisfies these conditions, are the risky dense. There are a lot of fibers. So what you have to remove is not a few a nice closed set. You have to remove something which is the risky dance. So let me just give uh, wrong page. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Where is my page? Oh, here. Yeah. Let me just give a, a, a definition. So this is uh, this is a real problem. I mean, but still, I mean uh, this set that you obtain is quite small. So let me explain in what sense it is small. So let V be a nice variety. I have still one minute. Well, I have still one minute. Let V be a nice variety. Uh, and W be a subset of the set of functional points. And we say that W is thin if there exists. Uh, phi going from some x to v, such that uh, first of all, phi is generically generically finite. Phi has no rational section. And of course, third condition, W is contained in the image of phi. And it turns out that here, in the example we have just seen, if you take the union for all x such that the rank of the picker group of the fiber 
is strictly bigger than one of the fiber. This is a thin subset of V. But uh, Lugram in his talk is going to explain that in fact so it is uh, in common with uh, right that if you look at the measure of a thin subset or more well let's say the uh, of the adelic points, then the volume is zero again. So as the case of wine. Of course, a closed, uh, I should have said that is if you are looking at the closed subset, a closed subset is a thin subset because you take simply the immersion of the closed subset into V. It is generic and finite. It has no rational section. So if you take the rational points on the closed sub subset, it satisfies this condition. So here you have something which somehow generalizes. But the point is that instead of looking simply at closed subset, you have to look at all possible morphisms like that. And there are a lot of them. And well, it's not totally clear how op to obtain all these possible morphisms. OK, so I'm over time. So.